going on? This is Dutch with Prison Riot Radio. And right now we got the queen in the house. The queen of street lit. My sis, why he the club? What's going on, sis? Peace. Peace, family. How are you? Good to hear your you voice know, as always. I, absolutely, man. It's an honor and a privilege, man, to have you on, man. I know you got a crazy schedule, man, so we're going to get right into it. The first yeah. thing I really I always want to touch on is, you know, for everybody, is how long were you incarcerated and what made you get into writing while you were while you were incarcerated? Uh, my sentence was ten and a half years. Um, I took okay. it to trial and I lost, so I did nine and a half of those ten and a half years. And what made me start writing was I had called home one day after um, after my sentence. It took me a year. We were sitting out in Arizona. Uh, it took me a year to get sentenced. Then when they finally sentenced me, they sent me to start doing my time in Lexington, Kentucky, at the federal prison camp. So when I got there, one day I called home. I asked for that my family to send me some money. They talked about something, we'll see what we can do. I said, what do you mean you guys will see what you could do? You know, I left a business out there and money and stuff. They said, well, he didn't know one's out here running your business. Your cars is getting repossessed. Your house is being foreclosed on. Actually, we are packing your two daughters up, and we are moving back up to Jersey right now. So from that point on, I had to figure out, because my husband, he was locked up. I had the two teenagers, daughters out there in the federal prison camp. It cost money to live there. You had to pay to wash your clothes, buy your soap, powder, soap, everything. You had to pay. Right. I'm like, I need to make some money. So um, I, my job was uh, my assignment. My job assignment was uh, the law library during the day and computer teacher at night. One day, I pick up a magazine after I had them call home, and they told me they didn't have no money. I prayed. I cried. I said, Lord, show me something what I can do. Picked up a magazine. There was a sidebar. It was a vibe or a source. Had a picture of Shannon Holmes in there. It said that he was in prison, and he had written a book called Be More Careful, and that's when I had my light bulb moment, and that's what made me start wow. writing. That's what's up. That's what's up. And so... What was the first thing that you wrote? I mean, like, cause I know, I know the first book that you wrote was was that, but was that the first thing that you actually wrote? The first thing that I wrote, because remember, I, I didn't know how to write, didn't plan on writing. I just knew once I saw Shannon Home was in prison, he had written a book called Be More Careful. I said, I'm in prison. Right. I can write me a book, too. So I asked my husband, Yaya, I told him I'm going to write a book. He didn't respond the first time. Second time, he didn't respond. The third time, he said, well, if you're going to write something for money, you have to write something that the major publishing houses is going to buy. That's pimping, drugs, you know, all that stuff. That's the stuff they like from us. So he said some Donald Goins type iceberg slim stuff. So I, I, that's how I started writing. So my first book was Thugs and the Women Who Love Them and Every Thug right. Needs a Lady. Once I started writing, I got into my groove and I couldn't stop. When I turned the book uh, in, they said, you got to cut this. They said, you, you, this book is too big. You got to cut some of this out. I said, no way. This stuff is too good. I'm not cutting nothing. So that's how I ended up getting two books at one time. Thugs uh, and the Women Who Loved Them, and then Every Thug Needs a Lady. And that made me the first street lit author to have a series. Classic, too. It was absolutely classic from the minute. The first time when it first hit, I remember seeing the cover. I remember seeing it. Because I think you were with... Um, it was a B on the publishing. I remember uh, seeing uh, that. Black, black print. Black print. Black print. Is that? Black yeah, I remember Paul that. Weber. I remember yep, that. Paul yeah. Weber put yeah, me on. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. So during that time with you, with, me, with your writing and things of this nature, and, and like you say, you were going through a lot. There's a lot of pressure on you. There's a lot of bad things coming your way. How did you keep the, the, the face so speak? How did you keep your head up? What was, the, what was your foundation? My foundation was prayer. Prayer to Allah, reading the books by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Prodigal right. sons and daughters staying busy. When you're in prison, you can't let the time do you. You have to do the time, stay busy. And the main thing, don't waste time. You, you go in, When you go to prison, if you ain't got a GED, get your GED. If you ain't got a degree, if you can get a degree, get a degree. You ain't got a skill, right. get a skill. Don't waste that time because them years, you can't get that time back. Absolutely. Absolutely. I say a lot of times to a lot of brothers and sisters, I always say, like, we have to, we have to leave the time of a billionaire, right? Yep. Like, we don't have to worry right. about no, with no bills, nothing, yes. no money, yes. everything is, out so why not invest yeah. that time? I'm telling you, it's like a, 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 a fat farm camp. Like, I remember when Martha Stewart came through. Man, she right. took that time to, to get her health together, lose weight, 
focus, you know, hey, don't, don't waste time. Uh, exactly. That time, you're right, the life of a billionaire. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, and, and that's that's one thing I hate about when I hear people say, man, I'll be like, what you doing, man? I'm just going to do this to kill time. Like, you killing time? Like, <laughs> you know, that's like throwing money out the window when you're driving down the street. Like, that's you're throwing the bills out there. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you right. time, man? Like, that's that is right. so foreign. I definitely, yes, I definitely agree. So, it was a blessing for my law. You came home after nine and a half. You stepped out. Mm -hmm. By that time, what was what was what was the book game like? What was your publishing like at that time? You had already published several books. Were you already publishing other people, or, or had you not done that yet? Um, when I stepped what? out in two thousand and seven. Now, mind you, while I was in there, and once my book started circulating through all of the prisons, and my name started getting known, everybody was buying the book. You know, every month I was on the Essence Magazine bestsellers list, yep. and then yep. that was inspiration to other incarcerated authors because they start sending me manuscripts and start saying, look, put me on, what I'm going to do? So much so that the prison, the, the, the lieutenant called me down to the office and said, "Miss Clark, you can't run a business while you're here in our prison, and I got put in the hole for that. Wow. So, yeah, but I was an wow. inspiration. That was like, just like when I saw Shannon Holmes did it, Every, when I started right. doing it, everybody else was like, I can do it too. So they start, and my address was in the book. So they start hitting me up and was just getting manuscripts and mail, mad mail. So, um, yeah, so, so when I came home in 2007, I already had seven books under my belt. I had two right. major publishing companies. I had Kensington. Then when my editor left Kensington, she went to Hachette and I went with, with her. So I had books, I got books at Kensington. I got books at um, Hachette when I came home two okay. major publishing houses behind the wall wow. so the book game it was, it was at its height it was at its height it was so That's good it. so much so that cash money they was like okay we don't conquer records now we're going to get into the book game so they started a right. street lit imprint and that's how I got on cash money um, content it was called with baby wow. and slim gotcha 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 so Tell me a little bit about my about my project with sons and daughters because I know that's real big with you and I know it's doing it's doing a lot of good in the community. Yes, Prodigal Sons and Daughters, and actually the founder Dennis Porter, he should be just wrapping up the online course. Somehow we're going to have to get it into the prison because our 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 life skills training is to, to us is, is we can't beat it because it changed the mindset of the individual. If you don't change your mindset, you can't change it all. You got to change your mindset. So we have the way to, to implement the, uh, the the life skills, the financial literacy, the financial uh, family reorientation, conflict resolution, communications, network, right. and character building. Networking and character right. building. So those six key things right there, we, you have to brush them up if you think you're going to go out here in the world and uh, get a little bit of respect. You know, it's already hard coming from prison. Then if you're black and poor, you really got the, the, the deck stacked against you. So you got to come on with, with some game and some polish, some knowledge, and, you know, some, yeah. some way to move and uh, thrive in today's economy. It's crazy out here. Absolutely. Oh, no, no. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now, you got so much going on, it'll take three phone calls to get, but in a nutshell, what, what, what you got going on? What you, what you want to share with the people that have the West on their Look, I got a headache right now because I'm putting together this proposal. I forgot all about this call, actually. And I was uh, just about done getting ready to email it over, and, and uh, I got the text message. You could forget about Kwame. I'm like, oh, snap, I sure did. So, yes, we got some big things going. So we'll save that for part two. We'll save that for okay. the second phone call because we hey. do got a lot of good things and big things brewing. So we're excited. Absolutely. We're trying to Absolutely. keep up. So we're going to do part two, and this is done shining over the queen of the street lit for part one. Yes, Peace, sir. everybody out there.